But well, we've been talking and analyzing and criticizing and all this kind of eyes and stuff about this mud wagon. It's time to put actions to our words. Let's start building it. Well, if you've been watching my Tuesday edition of my projects after work, you remember that last week I was out feeding and watering calves when it was five below and that south wind was blowing and that chill factor was down there. Well, it kind of got to my throat a little bit. You can kind of maybe tell I got a little raspy voice today. Well, that's just kind of part of the game, I guess. It's trying to turn into a cold and I'm trying to beat it back. So I'm going to start out with some 8 quarter ash. I have a lot of ash around, mainly because I steam bend a lot of ash. But it's also a good resilient wood for framework. And this is going to be the foundation for the framework of this mud wagon.
So when I initially made this rear cross frame, I made it the same width and thickness as the front one that holds the front driver's boot. This will hold the rear luggage boot. But I got to looking closer to this side brace iron and the bolts were telling me that this is two inch thick instead of inch and a half thick. So these would be the bolts that would go through this cross frame member. It's going to set up about like so. So with these bolts still intact, with this one with the nut and the washer both, I have two inches here instead of the inch and a half like I have up front. So in order to make this work, I've got to change my lap joint system. The one in front, this cross member was lapped on top. But in order to get this face flush here, I have to do the opposite lap joint. And this is going to have to be underneath with a, a joint to bring this up flush so I can put my rabbit in on the ends for the floorboards. So this one has to be opposite from the front. And it has to be two inch instead of inch and a half. So when this is actually jointed together, this will come up from the bottom. I'm going to lap joint this, which will fit in this notch here that I put in. But I'm just trying to figure out if my eight and a half foot length, which is what I have marked here for the sideboards, is the complete overall length. What I'm pondering, trying to figure out, is where does this end board go? Does it go on top or does it recess the end where it becomes flush? Um, that's what I need to get the bolts out of this back brace iron and just see how it fits up in here. So I'm kind of leaning toward, this is pretty close to the spacing that they're going to be. These two here are going to line up with the cross braces to the rocker. This one is centered between the two. And it kind of lines up on the old sideboard. If I measure down this sideboard to these holes here, these holes line up with this brace and the center of this rocker brace. And that's at 34 inches. 
Well, it's pretty tough to be too accurate coming back here. I'm going to guess about 67, but these holes are pretty worn. So if I go center to center here on these rocker braces, we have 33 inches center to center between those two, which should line up here. So 34 and 33 is going to give us our 67. And then the one in the middle, and I'm all going center to center, this one here is at 51. So we're going to be 34, 51, 67 center to center on these three cross braces. And that's where I have these walked up 34, 51, and 67. Now on the old framework, this iron here sits just ahead of this cross frame. Remember when I was kind of mocking it up, this is a back rear frame. Here's a hole that I think this rear luggage boot frame set in at, so it's just the head of this third cross member for the floorboards. So if I position this right ahead of this cross member here, this has a little bit of play in it, but as I tried to set it this isn't real accurate here, but I tried to set it pretty perpendicular. I find that I have some room to play here. It'll, it'll hinge on this, on this bolt right here. But I think this is enough to indicate that there's going to be room inside this ironwork for my back tailgate, if it is actually a tailgate or if it is just the end gate of this whole box, which I'm tending to lean toward that direction. So with that said, I think with the eight and a half sideboard is gonna come up here, this end board is gonna set inside. I'll have to figure out what this framework is. So I think I can go ahead and cut these off at eight and a half feet, finish this joint, and then this will come up underneath where it should. I think. Well, I'm still puzzling over this back joint here. This is where I thought maybe the tailgate end gate would be three quarters in from the eight, eight and a half feet. But then, just was bothering me. One was the the length of these bolts here. I have two and a quarter inches on these bolts. So there needs to be, you know, the half inch for the little raised side, three quarters of an inch. So there's an inch and a quarter. So I have an inch difference of, must be some type of framework. So I was puzzling, how did that get jointed in there? Just not settled. So then I went, remember there's a top iron here. So I went and measured that. So if I measure from this center of this bolt to the end of the iron, I have 33 inches into this iron to the center of this cross frame where that bolt is going to line up with the brace on the rocker. So if I measure from the center of this cross frame where that bolt's going to be and come up 30, 33 inches, you see my end of the iron is going to be right here in the middle of this iron brace by three quarters of an inch. So now I'm thinking with this top iron, this iron has to be out flush with the end of this frame. So if I pull this out, it's pretty stiff. I'll see if I can get this pulled out here. I didn't want to hear it too far. So perhaps that's where it should be. So then, if I measure from the center of this cross brace, about right there, see I can put this right at that 33 and make that work. So now I'm thinking maybe there is no corner joint. Maybe this iron is the corner joint. And I need an inch spacer in here, half inch for the side trim, three quarter for the 
side panel, box side, one inch to make up the difference of this bolt depth here. Was it just a one inch by two spacer that was put in there? Possibly was there no end gate. So that's kind of the quandary. Where do I put it? Kind of leaning toward because of this top iron on the inside mainframe that length I have to put this brace clear to the end of the eight and a half feet. That seems to be a constant. So is it possible that there was no end gate? It seems odd because as you put luggage on this rear luggage boot it would need something to kind of bump up against. Well I have another picture of an old mud wagon that has an end gate that is added on past the sides of the body of this particular coach. You can see here how it extends out past. It doesn't set flush. Now there's one in the background that is maybe a little closer to this body style that has an end gate that actually looks like it has hinges on it. That's kind of what I expected here. I don't know. The thing about this is there was nothing there. And this whole coach is so different and so asymmetrical, it's kind of a puzzle. So I think this is pretty much the basic floor plan, 42 by 8.5. I'll start to joint in the driver's box framework and kind of get this in a forward direction. Seems like the first step is always the hardest, but as I just spend more time around this, it just seems to be coming together. I'm, I'm beginning to realize where some of these iron pieces go. Uh, some of the, the bolts are telling me what's what. So it'll just kind of evolve, I think. So appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.